But one quote that I've sort of clung to is this quote which I read when I was here last time, which is a quote from Meher Baba, one of the five or six that I still keep using. Because it seems like an ideal introduction into what bhakti yoga is about, or the yoga of love or devotion, which is is often said to be the appropriate yoga for the Kali Yuga, or the period of darkness. It's the method of the heart. Mayor Baba says, Love has to spring spontaneously from within. It is in no way amenable to any form of inner or outer force. Love and coercion can never go together. But though love cannot be forced on anyone, it can be awakened in him through love itself. Love is essentially self-communicative. Those who do not have it catch it from those who have it. Now, to see where love fits into the scheme of things in relation to consciousness, which we've been talking about most of the day, you have got to have wrestled with and come to a deep understanding of the statement that love and consciousness are an identity. That is, they are exactly the same thing. And if you want to take it one step further out, love consciousness and energy are an identity. In fact, at that top of that pyramid where all of the stuff comes together into the oneness, love, if you follow it far enough back, energy, consciousness, truth, beauty, it's all the same thing. They're just different perspectives, different emphasis of the initial statement, which is unstatable. Now, when you open the fourth chakra, you experience more energy, and that is done, and the experience is one of greater and greater love for all things, all things, a compassionate love. Now, it is useful to get free of of thinking of love as a finite commodity or as out of the romantic models of interpersonal love. It may be that we'd be better off to get rid of all the words that we've overused, like love and consciousness and energy. But since we are working with them, because they do show emphasis, start to understand the difference between what would be called Christ love or that profound love of the beingness and the doing love of I love you. Now, if you understand that love is a state of existence, it's a state, it's a vibrational place, it's a psychic space. And when you say we are in love means that you and I do that thing to each other which allows us to come into that psychic space. In other words, you really say, my beloved turns me on, which means touches a place in me where I am. Love. That's really a better way of saying it. Okay. You allow me to be love, is what you're really saying to somebody that you say, I, you, you know, I love you. When I say I love you, it means that you allow me to be, be love, okay. which is a more exact way of saying it. You turn me on to that place in me where I am love. And if you start to see that as you transcend, you notice that when you are in love, you are as much concerned with the well-being of your beloved as yourself. And if they haven't eaten, you don't feel like eating. And, you know, you're really, there's that place where you, where you share karma, if you will. 
you merge with that other person and their problem is your problem. You don't decide whether it'll be their, your problem. It is your problem because you've merged in that way. Well, in that sense, you have both entered into a shared psychic space, which is uh, uh, what happens the minute you can transcend the boundaries of your own individual separate identity. Now, it's useful to think of this, I think, as, as frequencies of vibrations. I think it works quite well that way. That if, if I am in love, that feeling when you're in love with life or another person or nature or spring or whatever that thing is where you're dancing inside and bubbling over and the whole thing is new and fresh and beautiful, that place, that you can think of as a frequency a vibration in which you are perceiving. It's like a, a field, a way in which you are seeing the universe, and it's all vibrational. It's just like color spectrum. At different vibrations, you see different colors. Well, in different vibrations, <laughs> you see different realities in the same way, in a more profound level. So then the question, as Mayababa says, is since that higher vibration, the game is to get identified with higher and higher vibrational rates. In other words, do your take of yourself through these higher rates until finally you get to the point where you are light and you merge with light, which is the highest vibrational rate while where stuff stays separate from one another. Anything beyond Planck's constant, it's a different matter entirely. It's, it's the other side of the coin. So now when you want to change your own vibrational rate, the, one of the games to do it with is to calm the mind down till you get free of all of the thought patterns that keep you stuck at this vibrational frequency, this channel. Another way of doing it, which is the bhakti yoga way, which is within dualism, is to pick some, some entity to which, which is exuding love by its nature, or light, or love, light, life, etc., and then just keep opening yourself to it by this process. In other words, you pull yourself into its vibrational field by surrendering to its vibrational rate. And the reason you can do it is because it's perfectly safe. Okay, it's perfectly safe. Now, see, Maya Baba, for example, says, all you've got to do, he says, if you want to go the whole trip, all you've got to do is love me. Sounds like a far-out egomaniac. You know, just love me enough, and you'll become enlightened. But what he's saying is, through your ability to love me, you will tune in on the place in you which is love, and that place is the same place as full consciousness. And that's what enlightenment is, where you become one with love. You are love, you are light, you are energy, you are consciousness. It's the, it's the place where every movement you make is the totally creative act, because you can't do anything but that, because you're always performing the optimum act in any situation.